No. I'm not worried at all. I rely on God, Allah. One thing to note when it comes to uh, believing the speech of uh, Munafiq is that their speech can be very eloquent. Eloquence is not a criteria for truth. They're not one and the same. Because nowadays, right, uh, a person will say, oh, you should listen to this speaker. is beautiful. Like the way that he speaks is beautiful. Oh, we should hear what they say, beautiful. Or, you know what, listen, uh, you know, uh, you should listen to this person. Oh, this person uh, is Arab and the person is Arab. They're, they're so happy. Oh, this person, the speaker is from Philistine. The sister will be like, oh, look at this sheikh. You should got to listen to this. What the sheikh says, uh, because, you know, she likes to hear from a sheikh. You see somebody, oh, I like to hear from the African-American brothers, so this, uh, black brothers. Oh, you got to listen from these black. They're bringing the truth, right? And so again, they divide themselves into groups. They, they may be well appearing, but that's not the criteria to, to appreciate and understand the truth. Because the munafiqeen can be very charismatic uh, in, in speech. Allah SWT tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah uh, two, uh, 204 that they can be uh, very pleasing. Their speech can be very pleasing to you. Among mankind, there is people, their speech is very pleasing to you. Uh, but, of course, this is the speech in refer a reference to the munafiqun. They can be very pleasing. It can be really alluring to you. But it's not a criteria for the truth. And that, that speech is something that should be uh, acted upon. Our Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us about some of the characteristic traits of the munafiq. We're trying to see a pattern of behavior here, but this also will give us a clear guidance in isolating patterns of behavior of a munafiq. Rasul Sallallahu said in, in a hadith in Bukhari that there are four things that whoever possesses all of them is a pure hypocrite, and whoever possesses some of these characteristics, then he has a part of the characteristics of hypocrisy until that person abandons them. When he is trusted, he proves to be disloyal. So loyalty is a sign of iman. Disloyalty is a sign of nifaq. When he speaks, he lies. When he makes a promise, he breaks it. When he argues, he behaves in a very insolent manner. You see the difference when Abdullah bin Ubay was trying to stoke argumentation, calling the Sahaba dogs. Right? Making the analogy of that. Whereas our Rasul is saying, leave it. It's evil. You leave it. Don't worry about it. Don't talk about it. Don't spend time on it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, he, he, he proved the truthfulness of Zayd. What we have to understand that no matter how charismatic a liar is, that the liar um, should not be believed. And that um, they won't uphold agreements and they might do anything to win. Politicians are really good with this, right? It becomes so normalized now that politicians speak very well, very eloquently. And, you know, most of the times they don't uphold their, <laughs> there's never, if you look at the politicians or what they promise and what they actually end up doing, it's like as if there's two different lists, like you're two different people, what you actually end up doing and what you actually uh, were promising. Now, one thing to note is that there is a difference between a pure munafiq and somebody who has the characteristic traits of nifaq. Previously in the last haraka, in the last session, there was a question asked about whether or not they would be like an absolute munafiq or they have characteristic of a nifaq and can you call somebody as if they are pure munafiq, okay? There's a difference. You don't necessarily, you don't have the authority to call somebody a pure munafiq. You don't have the authority to do that. But you do have the authority, like depending on the situation, only when it's required to see if a person has characteristic traits of nifaq, if it's related to an actual pragmatic reason. Meaning, for example, we want to pick somebody in a position of responsibility and leadership. If that person shows traits of nifaq, you do not assign that person into that role. So you are allowed to judge on that level in a worldly sense. You're not going to, if you, if you ask somebody, okay, we need to entrust a person in this organization with our finances. Are they trustworthy? 
you, you can say, no, they betray their trust or they're disloyal, etc. But or they break their promises. So that is a legitimate way of doing it, of discussing it. But we can't say because you don't know the condition of a person's heart that a person is a pure munafiq. And people can also make tawbah from it. People can repent. Just like a person can repent from kufr, you can repent from nifaq, from hypocrisy. Okay? Abdullah bin Ubay, when this ayah was revealed in Surah Al-Munafiqun, either one of two reactions of Abdullah bin Ubay. Either he didn't think these ayat were about him. And if he didn't think these ayat were about him, then what did we speak about in the previous halaqa? That people who think that they are saved from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the ones that are doomed. So either he thought this ayah is not re relevant to him, he didn't change because oh, it's not relevant to me. Or he chose to ignore the ayah and turn away from it. And then, of course, he puts him in the self in the situation in Surah Al-Saf, Ayah 5, where Allah SWT says, when they turned away from the path of Allah, Allah SWT turned their hearts away from the path. So when they turned away from Allah, Allah turned away from them. Ultimately, the result was harmful to Abdullah bin Uway. After this revelation in Surah Al-Munafiqun, the son of Abdullah bin Ubay. His name is also Abdullah. Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Ubay. He uh, hears what has happened. He goes to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I have learned that because of what you found out about my father, uh, Ibn Salul, you want to kill him. So this is a rumor. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obviously we know from previous statement, didn't want this to happen. But this is the rumor that was going around. So he says, I heard the rumor that you want to kill him. If you are going to do that, then order me to kill him. His own son? He says, I will carry his head to you. For by Allah, the people of the Khazraj know that no one among them is more dutiful to his father than I am. And I fear that if you command someone other than me, and if that person kills him, I will not allow myself to look at the killer of my father walking around safely among the people. I fear that I will kill him, which means that I will have killed a believer in retaliation for the death of a disbeliever and that I will enter the hellfire as a result. SubhanAllah, look at the reaction of his own son and look at the opinion what they consider the munafiqin to be. They consider the munafiq to be akin to kufr. They consider the munafiq to be akin to a disbeliever. This is the lowly like, opinion that they had of the munafiqin. Look at his loyalty. You know when we're talking about the one who is disloyal? How many Muslims are disloyal to each other? Right? And set each other up. Right? There's a whole industry. One particular franchise in the Islamophobia industry, if you want to get this franchise, it's very easy. You know, to set up your own franchise in Islamophobia Inc. Is you just go to certain government agencies and you say, listen, if you give me a paycheck, I'm willing to wear a wire. I'm willing to record. I'm willing to give you anything. And if nothing's going on, I'll fabricate it. It doesn't matter. I'll do, what, I'll do whatever it takes. Right? There's a whole industry based on that. And that's why brothers, when they go <laughs> you know, to any like uh, Muslim restaurant or like, you know, they go to a masjid, they, they start talking about anything controversial, political. That's like, be careful. You know, this might be something's hearing or whatever. Like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Or they have to say, and we don't believe in violence. Like, we believe in justice, but we don't believe in violence. Like, they have to give all these disclaimers as if, like, it's going straight to, uh, you know, certain agency, right? The red phone. They're, you know, that's an old school reference. But anyways, subhanAllah, this is uh, the type of uh, loyalty that, uh, you know, sometimes we see. And, of course, the negative and gross impact that it has on the community. Whereas, look at how he deals Look at how his own son deals with the situation and the loyalty that he has for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what does the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Even though Abdullah bin Ubay is stoking the flames, trying to cause disunity, and it's known, ayat of Qur'an come to confirm what Zayd said was true. He was on the haq. Look at how merciful the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is dealing with him. He says, no, instead, we will be gentle with him and we will show good companionship to him as long as he remains amongst us. Now, as they're about to reach Medina, 
Abdullah, he started to accost his father. He prevented him from entering into Medina. His own son. He said, I was the most beautiful. Think about this. I was the most beautiful. And now he's preventing his father from coming into his own city. He says, stop. For by Allah, you will not enter al Medina until the Messenger of Allah gives you permission to do so. Abdullah ibn Ubay had to get permission from the Messenger of Allah first to be allowed into Medina because his own son was not allowing him to come in. There's a few ayat from Surah Al-Munafiqun uh, that I want to mention. And these are ayat 2 to 4. Allah SWT says, They have made their oaths a screen for their hypocrisy. Thus they hinder men from the path of Allah. Verily evil is what they used to do. That is because they believed, then disbelieved. Therefore their hearts are sealed, so they understand not. And when you look at them, their bodies please you. And when they speak, you listen to their words. They are as blocks of wood propped up. They think that every cry is against them. They are the enemies, so beware of them. May Allah curse them. How are they denying or deviating from the right path? There's a few points here we want to isolate from these ayat. Their good words, their oaths, their promises, you know, their good deeds are just a screen. It's a facade. It's just decoration. It's not real. There's no real belief behind it. There's no real significant iman behind it. And we have many, you could have any project. I remember there, there were uh, people who were involved in volunteering to collect money for orphans. And so they would say, oh, we're going to collect money for Muslim orphans. And the main reason for this organization is so that these brothers and sisters could, you know, get together in like haram environment and do haram things. And, you know, it was just a facade just to show, hey, we're doing something good. But in reality, there was ulterior motives uh, at play. They hinder people from the path of Allah. They are negative and cynical. Hey, we should do something khair. We should do something peace of Allah. We should do something that this community needs. And so they're pessimistic. Why? Why are you spending time and money and effort to do something good? Why? They'll make you feel like unconfident. They'll make you second guess yourself from actually doing something feasible. Like they'll put that cynicism in you. Their characteristic is that they disbelieve after they believe. So their iman again, what they're showing is always fluctuating. What they're believing is always fluctuating. And that's why nifaq is actually the most dangerous disease for a Muslim. Because it's easy to start faking and not really believing in what you're doing. You show the world a face. You show people a face. And then in your heart you have something else. Allah knows. Allah SWT knows. The fact that you have a consciousness, think about this. If you didn't have anything else, if you had no other senses, I take away your sense of feel. I take away your sense of smell. I take away your sense of eyesight. I take away your sense of hearing. Do you still exist? You can't describe to anybody that you exist. But you still exist. Even if I take away all your senses, you still have your consciousness, correct? How do you describe? How can you explain that to somebody who just believes in materialism? I exist. I can't explain to anyone, I can't describe, nor can I see that the world of Saudi me exists. But I know that there's existence, just by my consciousness. And you think that state of your heart, that consciousness, is not being uh, monitored. That the one who created it cannot see what's in that heart, that state of that consciousness. You believe that you're free from that? That you can hide everything from the state of the world? Just as you can feel your consciousness, just as that is true, then what can be revealed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the state of your heart is true. And of course, many of these people, they lack understanding of the deen. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, their bodies and speech, they please you. You know what an actor is? What is the objective of an actor? They want to put on a certain persona. An actor can play a doctor. They don't believe you know, in that character. They don't know anything about medicine. But they can, on the outward, they can play a doctor. You know what I mean? 
It's like I'm having a heart attack. It's like, are you a doctor? No, but I play one on TV. You know, I can, <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to help you out. An actor's job is to fake an outer persona. What they're saying, they don't necessarily believe in it. What they're doing, how they're presenting themselves, they don't necessarily believe in it. Okay. But that actor can be very pleasing to you. Oh, what an actor. You know what I mean? What a great speech. That actor may not even care. You know, what a great actor. He played like the civil rights leader. That actor could be racist, right? It's like, what a beautiful speech, right? How they present themselves like an actor can be really pleasing to you. And what they say can be really pleasing to you. But as Allah SWT says, they're like blocks of propped up wood. Uh, you, you know, like a cardboard cutout? It's just like that. Oh yeah, it, it looks good, but there's no meaning or substance behind it. And another characteristic trait in this ayah, which is important, is that Allah SWT says, they think every cry is against them. They think every criticism against them. Everyone is against, like... You know, everything is against them. They take things very personally. Rather than if you were to take something as a reminder that, okay, if I'm doing a haram, I would want somebody to tell me I'm doing a haram. If I'm doing something wrong, come tell me. And I need to accept that because I shouldn't have kibbutz, right? I shouldn't have this seal of pride. But they take it in a different way. They take it personally, always offended. So I remember one time in intramuros, Muslim Students Association team, we were practicing basketball. Time for salah came. So then we got the brothers together to pray. And then after the salah, I gave a, sh a small tafsir on Surah Al-Alaq. So, you know, Iqra, Bismi Rabbika, Ladi Khalaq. So I gave a tafsir on, on that. And I, I spoke about how people tried to prevent, right? You know, Abu Lahab, he tried to prevent a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi I said, you know, Alhamdulillah, nobody's preventing us from praying. Only ourselves, we can prevent ourselves from praying. So I remember there's a brother in that gathering who, unbeknownst to me, took that reminder that we went over like he found it offensive because unbeknownst to me, he was like arguing with some of the other brothers or oh, that maybe we shouldn't be praying in public, right? I had no idea. I just decided because, okay, I recited the surah in the salah. I'm going to give some tafsir on the ayat of that surah. And then like, just as like, without even knowing that the situation happened. So he thought that I'm talking about him. And I'm trying to put him down. So he got very upset, very offended. But it's not good to have that mentality, right? It's not good to say, if it's something that we can take the reminder of, we should take it. If it's the truth, that should be the criteria, not whether or not we personally feel that we're offended by it or not. That's the criterion, is that everyone should humble themselves to the truth. Everyone humbles themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's the only way that you can be guided, that you can adhere to the truth if you're humble to the truth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast on the path of Surat al Mustaqim and protect us from the disease of Nafaq. Subhanakumma wa bihamdak nashal antana subhanahu wa ta'ala wa laik wa al asar anil ansalna fi khusr ila ladina amanu wa amal al sari hati wa tawasu bil haqqi wa tawasu bil sabr. Jazam wa khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.